Hello, welcome to another episode of The Bolts Breakaway. I am Evan Klosky, that is David Sheely, and David, the vibes are immaculate right now with this They game. are immaculate. You know, I'm all about immaculate, okay? And we're going to have an immaculate morning today because we're discussing Braden Point's pursuit of 50 goals, how the Bolts might be playing themselves into the divisional race, and Dave Mishkin, the voice of the Lightning, joins us in studio to talk about this group and a new book coming out next week. How That's about that? right. Let's get started. It's the Lightning Round. The New York Islanders come to town today for the final Saturday night contest of the regular season. The Isles are fighting for a wild card spot and have lost seven of the last nine games. New York and Tampa Bay have split the season series up to this point. Meanwhile, the Bolts have won eight of their last ten. Maybe the most impressive nugget that I have on this team is the penalty kill. That unit has been solid as a rock this month. The Bolts have allowed one, just one goal against 32 power plays. That's roughly a 97% success rate. Thanks to this run, they're very close to being a top five PK unit in the league, Evan. Yeah, now the last time we saw the Bolts and we saw you, they were trucking along on the West Coast road trip during the five-game roadie. Tampa Bay earned nine of a possible ten points, including an overtime win against Anaheim without Victor Hedman and Braden Point due to a pair of injuries. However, Hedy and Pointer came back against Boston as the Bolts played one of the most impressive games of the season, handling the Bruins 3-1. Braden Point scored his 11th game-winning goal of the season. That put him towards the top. It is the top mark, actually, in the NHL level. Yeah. Has there been a better player this month then Braden Point with no. one more game to go. He has 11 goals and 17 points in nine games. He could become the fifth player since 2000 to have back-to-back 50-goal -back seasons, joining Leon Dreisaitl, Danny Heatley, Pavel Bure, and Alexander Hovechkin, who has done it twice. Point is eight goals away, David. Yeah, he's a big reason why the Bolts are not only looking good in the wild card standings, but in the Atlantic Divisional race. The Lightning are four points back of Toronto, and these two teams meet up twice to end the season. John Cooper obviously has a lot to be happy with right now. The addition of... of Dukey and Dumba, I think, have you know infused some life into us. But it's not just that. I, I think we were kind of growing to that part. I think the timing of them coming was perfect for us. Then special teams have been a big deal. You know, you start taking away the glaring errors and we're playing a much more consistent game and it's helped us out. As for the Art Ross Trophy race, Nikita Kucherov is five points away from surpassing his MVP mark from five years ago. In the last 10 seasons, only three times has the Art Ross winner not won the Hart Trophy. So we'll see if that's a major factor when it's all said and done. Get away! Yeti Gord! He clears it! He clears it! I don't think this is going to be an icing! No! Three seconds left! Petrio final shot! The Lightning have done it! They have done it! They, they have again. gone back to back for the second year in a row. Wow. They have won the Stanley Cup. Since 2002, Lightning fans have been lucky to have Dave Mishkin in the radio booth calling some of the biggest moments in franchise history. Dave is not only a fantastic play-by-play -play guy, but he's also an author. has a new book coming out next month called Blind Squirrel. Dave, thank you so much for spending some time with us. How are you doing? Thanks for having me, Evan. Yeah, we, we appreciate you coming in. Um, we just heard the call from that historic moment clinching back-to-back -back Stanley Cups here inside Amelie Arena. Do you have a, a favorite call uh, in your two plus decades of work with the Lightning? That's like asking you to choose your favorite kid <laughs> in a little, in some ways. 2020, we were calling all the games off the monitor mm -hmm. and Anthony Sorelli scored a double overtime goal mm -hmm. to clinch the Eastern Conference final for the Lightning. They were playing the Islanders. It was a tricky call. Like it wasn't clear the puck was in yeah. and everyone's kind of hesitating and and I thought I was right on it. Markley Goodrow behind the net. In front of Sorelli, shoot! Is it in? Score! Score! Is it in? Is it Sorelli! in? Stanley Cup Final! Here come the Lightning! Who is that kind of lesser name guy who fans need to know? Like, keep an eye on this person. He's going to be the engine for this team entering the playoffs. Well, if we're talking about one person, it's mm -hmm. probably not a lesser known person. I would say it's Vasilevsky. Mm -hmm. I think Vasilevsky's game is, is trending up mm -hmm. and if he is able to reach the level that we have seen him reach in other postseasons, that's going to be a problem for the other team. I would say it's going to require a lot of players pulling on the rope, but you asked for player mm -hmm. names, so I'll give you some. Uh, Hagel and Sorelli, they've been playing together a lot 
recently five on five, they always play together on penalty kill. Mm -hmm. In past years, they've been used with another forward as kind of the matchup line, the lane you're gonna use against the other team's top line. Again, those are two players. I think Kucherov and Point, you're gonna have to have your, your best players, your top offensive players, be your best players. So winning in the playoffs is an all hands on deck proposition, and they're gonna need that again this year. That's great analysis. Now, let's get into your writing. Uh, again, Blind Squirrel, you have such a busy schedule. I need to know uh, how you, <laughs> when did you find time to write this thing, and, and what is Blind Squirrel about? Well, let me take the second part first. So in Blind Squirrel, uh, Noah Nicholson is a minor league hockey player, captain of his team, who is silently struggling with his mental health. Mm -hmm. uh, when he was 12, his parents died in a car accident and he's dealt with mental health issues ever since. He's had a successful career, but then he sustains an injury and is forced to retire. And it's at that point that he's able to begin the healing process. And the Noah at the end of the book is in a much better place than the Noah at the beginning of the book. Mm -hmm. In the spring of 2022, the Lightning were in that first round series yep. against Toronto. One, they would ultimately win, but they were down in the series. It was gonna be, had they lost that first round series, a longer off season than what I had yeah. in past years. And I said to my wife, Dulcie, like, what am I gonna do this off season? She said, why don't you go back to that novel that you started all those years ago? So you said, when did I have time for this? It was funny, the Lightning, got to the Stanley Cup final throughout that run. I was concentrating on broadcasting when yeah. the games were on, but a lot of my free time, I was thinking about the story. And once I had the story, honestly, Evan, like I had to write this thing. I wouldn't have been able to live with myself if after 15 years of putting it off on the back burner, I yeah. finally had the story and didn't see it through. So here we are a couple of years later, it's in published form. Uh, I have a, a book signing launch event mm -hmm. on fourth, Thunder Alley outside Amelie Arena before the Lightning play Ottawa. So this is not a sports book, but it is a book with sports in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I will point out that I tried to make it accessible and I think it is accessible. So even if you don't know the first thing about hockey, mm -hmm. that's okay. Like you'll be able to enjoy this book. But if you do know a lot about hockey, there's an authenticity to the hockey stuff in there mm -hmm. that I think hockey fans will appreciate and enjoy. That's awesome. And one more time, if you can explain to people where they can get this book, when's it coming out, and uh, ultimately where they can go. BlindSquirrelNovel.com. That's your one-stop shop. <laughs> it's The pub date is April 7th. So right now you can do a pre-order. Come April 7th, you can just order it. And we'll have, we'll have copies. Pro Shop will have it you know, an Emily Arena, but the website is surefire. Like you can go there and, and get a copy. Certainly save me a copy. The full interview with Dave is on our 10 Tampa Bay YouTube page right now. So I know you want more of that and you want more of this. Victor Hedman walking into Emily with this adorable pup. Hedman has supported the Tampa Bay Humane Society for nearly a decade and he continues to raise funding and awareness for its mission. Anthony Duclair also fights for an important mission off the ice. Even though his seven game point streak came to an end Wednesday night, his impact in this sport goes well beyond whatever we see in the box score. Wide open is Duclair in, scores! Anthony Duclair is all about making a positive impact. That's certainly been the case with the Tampa Bay Lightning. Man, has this guy been hot since pulling on a Lightning jersey. I'm just trying to, you know, bring my experience, uh, especially from last year over, and, um, you know, try to amplify this uh, forward group and um, just try to fit in as much as I can. But fitting in has not always been easy for Duclair, who naturally stands out on the ice. Usually the only black player on the team or black player on both teams, and, um, you know, it's, it's a little tough to... To digest. As were the multiple racist encounters from his days in youth hockey. You know, you have to grow up really fast and mature really quick, and um, that's just uh, the, the way of life. Duclair doesn't want that life for minority children, so he's fostering change through his foundation, building an outdoor rink in Lauderdale Lakes, a predominantly black neighborhood. Hopefully, um, you know, they can use that rink and, um, you know, get in the game and just trying to introduce the game to, you know, different, um, you know, ethnicities and, um, you know, different backgrounds and especially in South Florida. A small step towards a larger goal. The more representation we can have, the more, um, you know, we can move forward, um, you know, with uh, growing the game and um, obviously more kids are going to be more involved and uh, glued to the TV watching us. Duclair hopes this positive impact lasts long after he's done playing. 10, 15 years down the line, um, you know, it, it wouldn't be an issue. 
I can't think of a better way to transition into our three stars coming off a story like that. Our third star goes to Zach Hyman of the Edmonton Oilers. At 31 years old, he reached 50 goals for the first time in his career. Only six players have hit that mark at an older age, and he's doing it only taking 5.5 mil off the cap. Yeah, that's pretty good. Our second star goes to the Nate Dog. Nathan McKinnon, Thursday night against the Rangers, his remarkable 35-game point streak at home came to an end. His 19-game point streak ended as well. I know we are in Nikita Kucherov country over here, but we got to tip the cap to this man. Uh, fell five games short of Wayne Gretzky's record. That is special. Finally, our first star goes to the Nashville Predators, overcame a 4-1 deficit in the third period this week against the defending Stanley Cup champs to keep their point streak alive at 18 games. Just like Nate Dogg, though, that blistering stretch is over as the Preds fell in Arizona 8-4. But a remarkable run by them, and just like the Bolts, they were a team heating up at the right time. Shout out Ryan McDonough. Checking out our picks record. Well, look at this. I take a one game lead over David after a perfect 3 0 week from me, so I'll do the honors and we're running out of time. I got the Bolts staying hot. I think they beat New York, Detroit, Toronto, but then they lose in Montreal on the second end of a back to back, David. All right, so that was a fraudulent week by him. I got to <laughs> come back. I've got the Bolts against the Islanders tonight, but I'm not picking Tampa Bay to beat Detroit or Toronto because they haven't beat either of those teams this season, but they're undefeated against the Habs, and they will stay that way next Thursday. All right, let's see what happens. Reminder puck drops tonight at 7 o'clock. Huge thank you to Dave Michigan coming into the studio today. That is David Sheely. I am Evan Klosky. This is the breakaway. We got more bright side coming up after the break.